Hi, I'm Stephanie Jaworski of joysbaking.com. Today we're going to make butter crunch toffee. This is delicious. As you can see here, this toffee has a, the top and bottom has uh, finely chopped almonds. Underneath that is a really nice layer of dark chocolate. And then you have the toffee and it's really buttery smooth with this really hard and crunchy texture. It's just wonderful. So first let's talk about equipment. You will need a 10 cup, which is about 2.4 liter, heavy duty saucepan with a, the lid, tight fitting lid. And you want to make sure this has a heavy bottom to the saucepan because we don't want the toffee to scorch. And then besides that, you will need, I like to use a candy thermometer. It makes things so much easier. So make sure it's a candy thermometer. We're going up to about 285 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 140 degrees Celsius. So make sure that your uh, thermometer goes up that high. And then um, you will need a wooden spoon or wooden, one of these real heat proof wooden spatulas. You want to make sure it's wood. You don't want to use metal because sugar um, syrup, it won't cling to wood like it does to metal. And then you will need a baking sheet and put the baking sheet on a uh, cooling rack. And then you can either butter the uh, baking sheet or I'm just going to spray it with a nonstick spray. So, whenever you're making this candy, um, read over the recipe a few times, really get um, familiar with it because timing is everything when you're uh, making candy. So make sure you, you understand what temperature, what you're doing when. And the other thing is have all your ingredients out and measured because again, timing is everything and you don't want to be rushing around trying to find an ingredient. So, um, the first thing we need is two cups of finely chopped toasted almonds. So, um, you can either use like uh, shaved or a slivered almonds and just uh, put them on a baking sheet and put it in the oven 350 degrees Fahrenheit, 180 degrees Celsius and just bake them for about 8-10 minutes just until they're lightly brown and you can really smell the almonds. Let them cool and then you will need to um, finely chop them. You can do this on a cutting board or I just put them in the food processor and process until finely ground. And then what we want to do is put a layer of um, almonds on your baking sheet and then we'll be pouring the hot toffee over top of that. So put about a cup and we're going to do it in a rectangle 8 by 10 inches which is about 20 by 25 centimeters. So just try to do an even layer you can get your ruler out for this the first time you're making it. Just make sure it's not that critical, but so that way the toffee will stick to the almonds. It won't stick to the bottom of your pan. Okay, and then just have the rest because we will be putting almonds over the top of the toffee, so I'll keep that. Uh, nearby and then we also need six ounces which is 170 grams of chopped dark chocolate you can use either a semi-sweet or a bittersweet whichever you like just use you know, a good quality one that you really just like eating on its own and then you will need once we do the uh, cook the, uh, the sugar after it gets to the temperature we want we're going to stir in one quarter teaspoon of baking soda and a teaspoon of pure vanilla extract. So have that really handy because you've got to stir that in as soon as we take the sugar syrup off the heat. So to start, we need a half a cup of uh, butter, and that's about 113 grams. I'm using unsalted. Try to use a you know pretty good quality butter because um, that gives the real the toffee the really nice buttery flavor that we like. And I cut it into pieces because that will melt so much faster. And then we need one and a quarter cups, um, uh, 270 grams of firmly packed light brown sugar. Just put that in. Give that really nice caramel flavor to this. And then we need um, two tablespoons of water. And just a little, one uh, tablespoon of 
the light corn syrup, or you can use golden syrup for this. And this will uh, help to prevent the crystallization of the sugar, which means grainy, which we don't want. I'm sure if you've ever made candy before, you've had that happen. It happens to us all. So, that's that. Now we're going to put this over um, medium, medium high heat. Just to, we want to make sure everything's melted and just bring it to a boil. And stir it, we stir it quite often because we want to make sure that sugar gets dissolved. So just to a boil. Okay, so as you can see, it's starting to boil. I'm just stirring, make sure that sugar and butter are all dissolved. So, got it now at a pretty good boil. Now, what happens is there has been some sugar that's on the side of the pan. And we want to wash that down because we don't want that to, to create uh, some uh, crystallization, which means grainy toffee. Now, there's a couple ways you can do that. Some people like to just take a pastry brush, dip it in cold water, and then just do the sides like that, wash down the sugar syrup. What I do is I just put the lid on the pot, and then I set my timer for um, one minute. And that way, the condensation just washes down the sides of the, the saucepan for me, so I don't have to worry. So just let that um, sit for about a minute. Okay, so that's a minute. Just take your lid off. And then, what we want this at is a nice boil. You don't want it like a furious boil, just a nice boil. So adjust your heat up or down as need be, and then Try to get the type of candy thermometer that has this kind of clamp on the back because what you want to do is clamp this on the side of your saucepan. Now, have the thermometer, you don't want the thermometer, the bottom, to be actually sitting on the bottom of the saucepan because that will um, give you an inaccurate reading. So kind of have it up just a little from the bottom of the saucepan. And then what we're, we're going to do is just let this boil away. Don't stir it. Some people say to stir, but the problem is even if you put a wooden spoon, which is better than a metal, there is the chance that you're going to start getting that sugar crystallization, which means grainy toffee, which we don't want here. So I just leave it. I don't stir it at all. And if sometimes what I do is just pick up this, your saucepan and just kind of swirl it to mix it that way. So what we're doing is we're going to take this up to 285 degrees, exactly. Really watch it carefully. That's 140 degrees uh, Celsius. And make sure you kind of get down at eye level to read it straight. Because if you kind of stand up here, you're not getting a real accurate. So just, so this will take, you know, depending on your boil, like I said, don't have it too furiously boiling, uh, somewhere around 10 minutes. Okay, so we're at 285, take it off the heat. It will rise a little higher after you take it off. So what we're gonna do is sprinkle over the top the baking soda and the vanilla. Now this may puff, puff up a bit, so be careful. And then with your wooden spoon, quickly stir it in. Now 285 is the soft crack stage. And what that means is if you put a little of this, if you didn't have a candy thermometer, okay, I'm just going to pour this over top evenly, over top of the uh, almonds. 285, like I was saying, is a soft crack. And if you put a little in a cold glass of water, when you, uh, it would like be firm, but still pliable. So if you didn't have a candy thermometer and you want to do it the, old-fashioned way. So as you can see, just pour it over top. Now the baking soda helps with browning and it also lightens the texture of the toffee. And of course the vanilla is for flavor. As you can see I'm using uh, 
with some pot holders here because this pot is very hot. So be very careful when you're handling this. You don't want to get any of this hot toffee on you. So as you can see, I'm just pouring it, trying to do it in an even layer as much as I can. Okay, there we go. Doesn't that look beautiful? So now, while it's still hot, take your uh, six ounces of chocolate and just put it, scatter it over the top. And the uh, toffee is really hot, so that's just going to melt the chocolate for us. So as you can see, this is why you want everything on hand. So as soon as you take that uh, toffee off the stove, you can quickly stir in the baking soda and vanilla and pour it on your uh, almonds. And then what we're going to do is just let this sit for a minute or two until the uh, chocolate has melted and then we'll smooth it all out. Okay, so as you can see the chocolate has started to melt. So you can either use, um, I'm using an offset spatula or just the back of a spoon. Just kind of spread and you want to make sure all of the toffee is covered with that wonderful chocolate. This is a really nice gift. I mean, this tastes as good as anything you can buy. I often get that. People want to know where I bought it. Okay, so just spread it to the edges. Okay, and then Last, just take some of your, some more of your uh, toasted almonds and just sprinkle it over the top. Put as much as or little. If you like a lot of almonds, you can do a really thick coat. Okay. Make sure you get on the corners there. So now, I'm going to put this in the refrigerator for maybe 15 minutes or so. You want the chocolate to get hard and everything to get hard, and then we'll um, chop it into pieces. Now, the problem a lot of people have, of course, your saucepan is got all that uh, sugar syrup, and it's kind of really hardened on there, and how do you clean that? So what I do is I fill it with some water, and then I just put it back on the stove, and just bring it just almost to a boil and then let it sit and then once that comes up then also put your candy thermometer because you can see I've got all kinds of uh, sugar just coated on there too. So that's how you can clean your pot, make it easy. So just into the fridge about 15 minutes. So now that our chocolate has set, we're going to cut it into pieces. So use a sharp knife and I mean, you can cut this any way you want, big or small, but just, I usually just cut them all into irre irregular size. A lot of times it'll just break into pieces. So just uh, like that. And then you want to make sure that you store um, your toffee in an airtight container because if it's not airtight, what happens over time is the toffee will soften, which we don't want. We really, I mean, the best part of this is that really hard and crunchy texture to the toffee. So um, if I'm doing it just for the family, I just typically just put it in one of these Ziploc bags. But if you're giving it as gifts, which, I mean, like I said, it makes wonderful Christmas gifts. Um, you could just buy these kind of mason canning jars. I mean, find them almost everywhere. And they have a nice clamp. 
And this is what you kind of see. If you ever go to um, like Christmas fairs, uh, markets, a lot of times they sell them and they just put them in like a jar and seal it. So you can do it that way. Or you can just go buy these little uh, party bags. Now the important thing if you're um, using a bag like this is we want to get the air out of it. So what I do is you have a twist tie and just take, you know, just a regular straw and um, just put it down there and, and then just suck the air out, take that, and then you get an airtight bag. Same if you're using a uh, Ziploc bag. And you can store the toffee for probably at least 10 days, two weeks, either at room temperature or I often just pop it into the fridge. And it's, it's just wonderful. You can make it in large batches. And the, the other thing I want to just before uh, I leave is your um, candy thermometer. Always store it. Don't just throw it in your kitchen drawer with all your other utensils and it bangs around because if it bangs around, it'll wreck it. So, you know, make sure it's in a place that it can't rattle around because you, you don't want it to, to wreck it. So. so until next time, I'm Stephanie Jaworski of joybaking.com. Thank you.